Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be decluttering our hobby items. I'm gonna take you with me as I declutter my craft box here. I'm gonna chat through my process with you. We're gonna talk about some reasons we hold on to items that we don't really need. Also gonna be going over some rules, <laughs> really more so guidelines that I go through in my mind when deciding whether to keep something or let it go. When it comes to decluttering items in our house, I find that hobby items, at least for me, are pretty difficult to part with, especially compared to decluttering toiletries or cooking utensils, for example. I think it's because they are subjects or activities that we closely identify with. Whether you're a gardener or a woodworker or like to collect some kind of cards or coins or super into a certain genre of books or video games, those are the things that define us so that we define ourselves by. For me, I identify myself in a lot of ways, but a few that come to mind with hobby items around my house, arts and crafts stuff, which I'll be going through today. Also camping's another big one for me. So having all of my camping gear so that I can pack up and get out there. Another one for me is dedication or fanship with a specific author or musician. I've held on to certain books thinking, well, I really love this author and if I'm a fan, I should have this book on my shelf permanently sitting there as a fixture. When it comes down to it, my loyalty and dedication as a fan is not defined by something that I own. That's sort of how I try to internalize some of my own hobbies and interests. These future project, future self hobby items that we hope to get to but haven't got to yet, these ones are really good ones to declutter. So an example of that is having a cookbook out that you haven't reached for in three years, but it's just still staring you down. And every time you're in your kitchen, you may not realize it, but when you see it, it's reminding you that you still haven't looked at me, you still haven't used me, and this is still something you need to do. I'm quite interested in Fumio Sasaki, author of Goodbye Things, concept of the silent to-do list. In this concept or theory, he says that all of the items in our home are sending us messages all the time as we are walking around, living our life, and some are positive. Maybe it's a well-made bed that's telling you, hey, I'm clean, jump in, rest your head here. And then there's other items in our home that are giving us maybe more negative nagging messages. Hey, you haven't fixed me, I'm still not working. All of these messages build up on this silent to-do list in our minds, and it's not a super conscious thing. It's more just something that is weighing on us. And once you actually remove those items from your home and get rid of them, it clears up this to-do list and it really feels like a weight has been lifted. That's what we'll be doing today. Some simple decluttering to bring some lightness, some levity without having these old items kind of cluttering my canvas playing field allows for more creativity and inspiration when I do decide to pick up that hobby again. When decluttering, I really try to strike a balance between holding on to practical things that I'll actually use and letting go. There are numerous infinite rules and guidelines that exist for decluttering and organization. I have boiled it down to the top three that resonate with me personally and I think are applicable to this hobby category. The first being simply, do I use this item slash do I even remember that I had this item? So if I'm going through something and I see something and think, oh wow, I forgot I had that, that for me is an instant no-go. It's, it's out, I do not need to keep it. If you've totally forgot you had an item, you're not gonna know to go use it when you need it. So what's the point of having it? I don't know, that's how I think about it. The second rule or guideline, which was coined by The Minimalist, is if you can replace an item in 20 minutes for $20 or less, feel free to go ahead and declutter that item. Third rule is the tried and true Marie Kondo, does it spark joy? I love this one, it really resonates with me. I know that people joke about it a lot, but to me, it's the final gut check. It kind of reminds me in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, when it's the good or the bad egg, it's kind of just as simple as that for me. Okay, here's what we're gonna be decluttering. This is my big <laughs> under the bed storage craft box. I've kept it under our guest bed and I'm changing over our guest room into my son's nursery. So it's time to move everything out and minimize the things I was keeping in there. I peeked inside. 
I'm not recognizing a lot of the things in here. I'm gonna go through everything one by one. I'm gonna try to go through it quickly, do a bit of a speed declutter and talk you through it as I go. Taking off the lid. And, oh, okay, yep. Oh yes. What I was also gonna mention is when it comes to categorizing everything in here, it's gonna be either a hell yes or everything else. I'm not gonna do in-betweens. It's gonna be cut and dry. So I'm gonna set these bags on the floor and start putting things inside. What I'm seeing on top is a paint set. This is my watercolor paint tray. I've had this for about five years. I do like to watercolor greeting cards and just little special paintings for friends. Definitely gonna be holding on to this. And in the same vein, I have my watercolor pencils for the same type of projects. I really love these and use these. So I'm going to be keeping these. Next, I have this pouch that keeps all of my paint brushes and sponges. I am happy with my current set of brushes and sponges. I have pretty nice brushes that have lasted a while. I take good care of them cleaning them. So I'm gonna hold on to everything in here. Next up, I have some watercolor paper books and sketchbooks. I think some of these are used, some of them are not used. Just miscellaneous paintings. Actually, this is pretty cute. Dustin and I did a Skillshare <laughs> workshop during the pandemic when we were really bored and painted something from our yard. So I painted a succulent and he painted a rose. So cute memory, but they're definitely not good enough to frame. All right, I think, what about this one? Okay, this one is blank, but it's not watercolor pages. I guess this is just a mixed media pad for drawing. I don't do a lot of drawing. I actually pretty much only paint, especially when I'm doing greeting cards, which is like 90% of when I paint, paint. So I'm gonna, let that one go. I also have this mini watercolor pad. Actually do use this for card making. I'll paint a little image and then actually cut it out and then use a puffy sticker to stick it on a card so it's a little bit more 3D. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. Next we have a paper cutter. This thing is awesome. If you don't have a paper cutter at home, they're the best. I use this a lot. This is one of my tried and true tools. So I'm gonna put this in the hell yes bag. Next I have this little light up letter board sign. It's really cute. I think these were really popular a few years ago. I don't got time for this anymore. I also feel like it looks a little bit young for me. It doesn't really fit my style or life right now. So this is gonna be a discard item. Next, I have this box of greeting cards. These are my pre-made ones when I don't have time to make a homemade one. I like to buy them at TJ Maxx or Home Goods because they're usually $1.99 or $2.99 which is a lot cheaper than buying them from, let's say, CVS. I have a few baby. I'm in that stage of life. So everyone's having a baby, myself included, so baby ones. A kid's birthday one I have. I've got a good one for my sister-in-law for her shower actually next week. Oh, here's some of those stickers I was talking about that are those foam stickers that I use for card making. So I'm gonna hold on to that. I have a few more happy birthday ones. I have a pretty good stock right now. One of my resolutions was to be good with giving birthday cards. All right, so these are some postcards of my college campus, actually. I think I found them at some kind of antique fair and I was like, oh my gosh, they were meant for me. Same with this cute little postcard, but I've never used these. I've had them for like three to five years. Same with these, these are extra postage stamps. I use them in my wedding invitations. I haven't used these in a few years either. They're really pretty. So I'm gonna discard these, pass them on to someone that will actually use them. I have some funny tattoos with my husband's face that we wore at my bachelorette party. I don't know how long tattoos last, probably not forever. So I think I should just use these soon and, or just get rid of them. Maybe I should get rid of them. I've been planning to use them soon for so long, but they're funny, but I guess the joke already was made. So ha ha ha, goodbye. goodbye. Next, I'm pulling out this stack of photo prints. These are photos I had planned, woo, man down. I planned to put into picture frames or they already were in picture frames and I've replaced them. They're sentimental photos. And so I think that's why I've been holding onto them. Wedding photos. Wedding, they're actually mostly wedding photos. Some old photos of me and my husband. This we took on a cruise kind of as a joke <laughs> when we first started dating in like I think 2014. And then a few other prints. I just, I, I'm not gonna be putting these up in my house and I have digital copies of all of these. So if I need to print them again, I can. I'm going to give away the two prints that I have and the rest of these photos I'm going to recycle. That's my plan for these. Next, <laughs> this is a funny one. Okay, this is 
like inappropriate. Honestly, you can probably see what it is. It was supposed to be a wine tasting bachelorette that got canceled in 2020. And I had hand cut out all these wine glasses and it took me a long time. So I saved it thinking, oh, someone else can use this for their bachelorette party. But I don't know, that hasn't come up yet. And it's been a few years. I don't need to hold on to these anymore. So I'm gonna let the bachelorette banner go. Next, I have a bag of fabric. In 2020, I got into sewing swimsuits and I held on to this fabric, some swimsuit liner fabric, and then also this yellow tool I got for a different project. It's been a while, I'm not gonna reach for them. And when I start another sewing project, actually I have one I'm gonna work on next week. I won't even be using any of this stuff. I'm going to let these go. Next up, I have this origami paper. I'm trying to remember why I bought this. Of course, I can find ways to use these little pieces of paper, but again, usually I just do card making and this type of paper isn't great for that. So I'm gonna discard these. Next, I have a stapler. I'm gonna hold on to this. This is the only stapler in the house. I don't go to an office anymore, neither does my husband. Typically, I would just use the office supplies at work. Now we're home, so I do wanna hold on to this for the rare occasion that we do need a stapler. I see a few things that I'm happy to discard. This is just a cute little box. I was hoping to use as a gift box. I've had it for a long time. I have never reached for it. It's kind of a very specific size, like what I'm gifting a watch. I don't know. So it's really cute, but I'm going to discard that one. Here's another sketch pad that's again, just plain paper, not watercolor paper. I'd rather just have a lined paper notebook for taking notes, all that I would really do with this. So I'm going to pass this on to someone else. Next, I have this mini calculator. I thought it was really cute because it's clear and I kept it in my desk at work, but even at work, I really just use the calculator on my desktop. I rarely reached for this. Really, really cute, but passing this one on. The next thing I'm pulling out is this wood burning pen. I actually used this to make a map of the US for my husband as a gift the first year we were dating. And I have not reached for it since, which is like seven or eight years ago. So I'm gonna let this go. What do I have? Actually, this is brand new. It's a black stamp pad. I don't actually have really any stamps anymore. So I'm gonna pass the stamp pad on. Didn't even know I had that. And then also in here, I have some gold wax and a wax seal, I believe it's called with a D for my last name on it. I use these for our wedding invitations to seal the envelope. I just really don't think I'm gonna be using this. So I'm gonna pass these on as well. Moving on, in here next I have some candle wicks. When I was on maternity leave, I was wanting to make the most of it and do some extra special things around the holidays that I normally wouldn't have time to do. So I made some candles. It was kind of fun. The candles were pretty, but it was not very cost effective and they ended up not even being that fragrant and I added a ton of essential oils. I didn't have the most positive candle making experience, so I'm gonna pass these on to the next person. Next, I'm getting to another little stack of cards and paper that didn't make it into my card box. I see another card for my husband that I haven't given him. I really like giving cards. That's kind of a major theme in this video. I think that's definitely one of my love languages is a visual expression in paper form, not just the note itself, but having a creative image that represents how I feel about someone. So I'm gonna not show this in case he watches it, but I need to save that. And then I have some extra thank you cards that are baby shower thank you cards. So I'm gonna slip these into our card box and hold on to these because I'll certainly use them. Next, I have these little notebooks. They're really sweet. It's like a marbled print. Yeah, I haven't written in this one. And then this one says, I can and I will. They're pretty. It almost looks like a topography map on the front of this one. I really prefer bigger spiral notebooks, just a traditional spiral notebook. And I got these thinking I could carry them in my bag or my purse, but I just don't really need them. Next up, watercolor paint. I feel like I probably don't need all of these. It looks like two different sets. And so I'm going to try to reduce these. And I put watercolor on my palette and those same watercolors that are dried on there have been on there for years. And so I really don't need to be lugging these around. I don't know how long they last, so I should probably check the expiration date. So I'm gonna minimize these. I'm gonna set them over with my hell yes pile. Okay, next I have extra Sharpies. My mom gave me this massive, massive Sharpie set. I don't really use colored Sharpies that much. I picked out some favorite colors, plus some black Sharpies that I keep in our pen drawer. And they've been in there for a few years and they're still 
totally in great shape. I'm gonna pull out maybe one or two of the colors I really like, and then I'm gonna pass on the rest of these because I just, I, I don't need them. Next, I have this wrapping paper. I got this recently. I like a plain neutral paper. You know when you have that extra scrap of <laughs> wrapping paper and you just kind of swirl it around and think you'll use it next time? It usually just gets crinkled, like this one's already getting wrinkled, so I'm gonna declutter <laughs> this random rogue piece and hold on to this wrapping paper and this is gonna be my catch-all for everything. Wedding gifts, baby showers, et cetera, et cetera. Next, I have this roll of string. I am going to hold on to this. I think it's quite practical. I do reach for it every few months, like this is my go-to string. So, gonna hold on to that. Next, I have some felt. I used this felt to make my son's Halloween costume and just held on to the extra pieces because I have whole pieces that I didn't use and they were too inexpensive to return. I think they're maybe 10 cents a piece on sale, but I'm not gonna be using felt. I, I just don't need it anytime soon. So I'm gonna pass these on. Okay, final, final stretch. There's just a few random things in here. Ribbon that I saved from who knows. Don't need it. I'm gonna discard that. Glue stick. It's still functioning, but I think I have a few other glue sticks that are still in operation. I'm just gonna go down to Spark Joy. This one does not spark joy. I am going to discard it. Okay, a few more of things I'm gonna let go. Some holiday stickers. I was thinking I'd use these for gift wrapping. I'm gonna pass on these. This is a floater thank you card that got wrinkled and crinkled, so I'm gonna let that go. And then I had saved this brown bag for a gift bag. It's been a long time and I haven't used it. I'm going to pass on this one as well. Very last item in the box is scotch tape. I actually did not know that was in here. I would have totally gone to the store or bought more online. So super happy to find this. I've got my Hell Yes bag. It's not super full, but pretty full. I would say maybe one third of the box is in the Hell Yes. And then the remaining went to the everything else. I have that all in here, ready to donate and pass on. I'm gonna organize it a little more. And all done. Hey, <laughs> now that I'm done decluttering and picking my hell yes items, I'm gonna put them back in here to see what I've got. Now that I have everything back inside, I'm taking inventory. I would say the most glaringly obvious things that I need to replace is watercolor paper. I don't have any left except this small little pad. I also need envelopes and blank cards. And other than that, I'm pretty good. Yeehaw. Okay, I just finished sorting through my discard items and I categorized them into a recycling slash trash section for anything that I don't think is quite reusable. And then for the rest of it that is reusable, I've grouped it into little sections to submit as gifts onto my no buy group. And if you don't know about no buy groups, I highly recommend looking them up. There are these really cool Facebook groups that are essentially a place you can go to give away and to find things for free. So you don't have to buy things new all the time. And then when you're discarding things from your home, you can put them into someone else's hands in your local community that actually needs them. It's <laughs> okay. One of the tattoos of my husband's face fell on the floor. My baby just picked it up and now he's <laughs> carrying it around, which is really, really funny. Probably a choking hazard. Probably should go get that right now. Anyway, I just finished packing up all of my discard items and I'm posting all of my extra craft supplies as an option for hopefully a teacher or someone like that to use in their classroom. I'll put preference for that. And then I'm gonna post my wax seal. Find someone else with the last name. Starts with a D. I already got my use out of it. I think that'd be really fun come up for someone. This box is a temporary holding room for my remaining craft items. I actually wanna figure out some kind of wall hanging that goes in my closet where I can see everything really well. I don't have a bed to put these under anymore and I'm trying not to keep anything under my bed so that my room kind of feels light and like a sanctuary. Yeah, I would love more of a vertical hanger. I'm thinking kind of like a shoe hanging device type of thing. 
If you have any ideas, please let me know. I'm done decluttering. I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me. I had fun going through this and I feel really, really good. I have a good idea of my inventory now and know what I need to shop for. So that's it. That's our decluttering for the day. I hope you found some motivation to tackle maybe one of your hobby items in your home. Please tune in next week. I have some crafty videos coming up. I'm gonna get hands on and make some stuff. And until next time, please like and subscribe to support the channel. I really appreciate it. Have a fun day. Oh,